Decades ago, many movies had bands and artists make songs just for a film. The 80s, 90s, and 2000s were filled with awful, cheesy films that had killer original soundtracks, and people would cherish the music inspired by the movie more than the actual movie. Rock, metal, alternatives shine with their music on these rotten films, so let's take a look at 10 great soundtracks for bad movies. This list is based off bad movies. How do I qualify that? Well, I'm going with Rotten Tomatoes. The movie must have 50% or lower on the tomato. Meter. That's a low bar to get over, by the way. This video is not a top 10, no rankings, just a list. Keeping this also relegated to soundtracks that focus on rock, alternative, metal, etc. Finally, I know there are many more than 10 great soundtracks paired with trash movies. Leave a comment for what your favorite is. You know how these videos work, let's get to it. Starting off with the horror side, as I know Freddy vs. Jason does have a bit of a cult following, and it's less cheesy than some of the previous Nightmare or Friday the 13th films, but it's not universally loved. What is commonly praised is the heavy soundtrack the film boasted, horror icons, and heavy music. Yeah, they nailed the target demo pretty well. I don't know what else they could have asked for. I remember when this movie came out in theaters, and the soundtrack revolving around Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees trying to slaughter each other, which was exactly what many people wanted, as it shot the official soundtrack up to number 25 on the Billboard 200. 20 tracks with 14 previously unreleased songs, including Slipknot, Stone Sour, Kill Switch Engage, Hatebreed, Nothing Face, Devil Driver, Lamb of God, In Flames, Sepultura featuring Mike Patton, and more. The long list of names on this album revolving around the featured music with these two adorable faces was perfect. The soundtrack is not appreciated nearly as much as it should be, especially as it's 78 minutes long. That's only 20 minutes less than the movie runtime. The soundtrack is the perfect time capsule of heavy music and cheesy movies in 2003. The Twilight movies are awful. I'm not going to go into more detail than that. Dom Noble has many in-depth videos as to why the Twilight movies and books are garbage. Check them out on the YouTube cards. The soundtrack for these movies, surprisingly well done. So well done that I'm not sure the Twilight franchise deserves them, and I do wonder if the artists associated laugh a little bit. You can't go wrong with most of the Twilight soundtracks, but I'm sticking with New Moon on this one, as I personally feel it had the biggest soundtrack filled with names. While everyone was either Team Edward or Team Jacob, I was team, don't show me this awful movie, just give me the music. The New Moon soundtrack features music from Muse, Death Cab for Cutie, Tom York, The Killers, Bonnie Vare featuring St. Vincent, OK Go, and more. That is a great list of names from the alternative scene in 2009, and how did New Moon get all this? How did Twilight get any of this in general? Fun fact, the album release date was actually moved up several days due to extreme demand. You know you're doing it right when people are that desperate to buy something. At least the movies did something right with that. I guess that's one good thing. Woof. Before the amazing Netflix series and Matt Murdock being brought into the MCU, Ben Affleck was Daredevil. This was a wildly hyped up movie at the time, and time was not kind to it after release. Remember when comic book movies were usually pretty mid? Well, it was still the early 2000s, so you better believe Daredevil the movie got a fantastic soundtrack with it. Surprisingly great. The soundtrack was even certified gold in the US, and much of it was backed by the highlights of completely unreleased music, including Evanescence's Bring Me to Life and My Immortal. Yep, this soundtrack was the true introduction of those songs as it beat the release of Fallen by a month. Goes to show how big these soundtracks for rock and metal were back in the day. The Daredevil 2003 soundtrack features Evanescence, Moby, Chevelle, Drowning Pool featuring Rob Zombie, Boy Sets Fire, and one of my favorite Finger Eleven songs in Sad Exchange. This was before Finger Eleven changed directions again and went to the Paralyzer style. Now, if we can just get a good fight scene with Charlie Cox beating people up to Chevelle, then I know what I'd be watching on a loop for my new favorite action scene. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger has had some of the best and worst spectacles that Hollywood has had to offer. Not just action either, but also gripping drama or cheesy comedies. Then you get something like End of Days that no one knew what to make of it. Good thing the soundtrack had tons to offer because it it's hard to deny anything in End of Days, but the music inspired by the film works out. This was a hidden gem of a soundtrack altogether because the film did not do great in box office domestically, but that did not stop this collection of songs doing well because it reached number 20 on the Billboard 200, was certified platinum in the US and gold in Canada. End of Days soundtrack from 99 features music from Guns N' Roses, Korn, Rob Zombie, Eminem, The Prodigy, Everlast, and more. Some songs were taken from existing albums, some inspired by the movie, and some remixed tracks also were added, and in 12 tracks, End of Days offered a lot. Good sampling of popular names in 99 for the both new metal crowd and hard rock side of music in general, and highlighted Arnold fighting the devil and preventing the Antichrist from being born. 
I, at least I think that's what the movie's about. It's hard to keep all this 90s action cheese straight. Ugh, the comic book love in the 90s from movie companies was not the love they deserved. Spawn, I feel, is a comic character and story that should be done so much more justice than what was done to them in 1997. This movie wasn't received well, but the soundtrack still holds up, mainly because of the unique spin on having big name rock and metal acts all working with big electronica acts, and it's still a great idea too. Why don't they do this more? Take names like Metallica, Slayer, Korn, Incubus, Filter, Silverchair, Stabbing Westward, Henry Rollins, Butthole Surfers, and then match them with names like The Crystal Method, Moby, The Prodigy, Sneaker Pimps. There's not enough time to list everything, but it's so great to see an original soundtrack like this where everything's a collaboration between rock and 90s electronica that it all comes together. The soundtrack was difficult to put together also because so many artists were collaborating around the world, but the results paid off and the album was certified gold in the United States and Australia. This soundtrack is proof that unique collaborations can come together for a specific reason, a movie soundtrack. Not just collaborating to get attention, but to make something that contributes to another medium. Everyone wins here. Remember all the Transformers movies? Yeah, I know you do. They were the summer blockbusters that people knew would be bad, but they kept coming back for anyway, even though they got progressively worse. Every soundtrack for these movies was strong, but I'm sticking with Transformers Dark of the Moon in 2011 as the awful movie great soundtrack pick because the soundtrack was stacked and the movie only had Shia LaBeouf running around yelling. Now that I've upset all the Transformers fans, yes, I know you exist, it was just a joke. A soundtrack this stacked was not only smart, but also gave you more than you were expecting, especially at the time when iTunes was doing the deluxe digital albums thing. The standard version included songs from Linkin Park, Paramore, My Chemical Romance, Goo Goo Dolls, ZZ Top cover by Mastodon, and more through 12 songs. If you got the deluxe edition on iTunes, you also got tracks from Aerosmith, U2, Stone Sour, Biffy Clyro, and Serge Tankian featuring Tom Morello. That's impressive. Even if the movies became high budget CGI fighting with bad acting and plots, the soundtracks always stood out and Dark of the Moon was worth getting excited about that way. Say what you want about Michael Bay's movies and consumer manipulation, but at least he didn't ruin anything with the soundtrack. There are bad movies, and then there are movies made by Uwe Boll. The film's so rough you can't even riff them or laugh at them because it's too painful. Alone in the Dark fits that description perfectly. However, he did have a slight bit of say in the soundtrack for the movie. Put out by Nuclear Blast, this album is a fantastic sampling of metal names in the mid-2000s, and I cannot believe it's tied to Alone in the Dark. Two discs and over two two and a half hours of metal from big names all contributing to Alone in the Dark. Disc 1, including Fear Factory, Lacuna Coil, Dillinger Escape Plan, Cradle of Filth, Dimmu Borgir, and Nightwish, who directly worked with Bull to make a music video for Wish I Had an Angel. Disc 2 included Arch Enemy, Cataclysm, Dying Fetus, Misery Index, Death Angel, and Mastodon featuring Neil Fallon. Haven't even covered half the songs on both discs, and it's that loaded with material from many names that are still around today. Remember The Crow with Brendan Lee? Good. Only remember that and not the sequel, City of Angels. It's insulting that they are in the same franchise. The soundtrack was possibly the only good thing to be associated with the Crow City of Angels, and that is not a reach to say. Soundtrack was killer and went on to number 8 on the Billboard 200, while the movie went straight to the value bin. Even there it wasn't wanted. The original Crow movie also had a killer soundtrack, which led to artists like White Zombie, Filter, and Hole, who were on the original to return to the soundtrack for City of Angels, they did not know what they were signing up for. Along with those names, City of Angels also includes Deftones, Korn, Bush, Iggy Pop, Toadies, and a lot more. This is a fleshed out 15 track album running over 70 minutes, including a few cover songs. There's a lot of good stuff here. Platinum certified in the US, and the album even including a small Crow comic inside the CD booklet. That's an awesome little touch. I love when CDs and companies used to throw in little things like extra booklets or stickers or something. Now we have streaming as a result, and our favorite newer bands are slowly going hungry. Sad. Buy merch, people, it does help. Godzilla is awesome, except in 1998 when Matthew Broderick was the focus over the monster. The Taco Bell commercials for Godzilla were better than the movie. The soundtrack holds up though. Custom made songs, remade tracks, cover songs. This soundtrack has a strong variety and sampling of big artists at the time. This is one of the big standards in bad movies with a great soundtrack. I remember buying the soundtrack as a young kid and I enjoyed it, but then I remember years later putting all of my albums into a CD book and seeing the 
crazy number of names involved in being surprised just how many bands contributed to a movie where Matthew Broderick is saving New York from Godzilla. The soundtrack includes Rage Against the Machine, Foo Fighters, Green Day, Ben Folds 5, The Wallflowers, Days of the New, Fuel, and many more and includes the timeless classic, Come With Me, where Jimmy Page played a famous riff while Puff Daddy rapped over it. Timeless. The soundtrack had several radio singles, a classic cut from Rage, and proves Hollywood schlock is good for something, including that timeless classic, Come With Me. Weird how this song got the most attention from here, but there's so much better on this album. Save this one for last, as this is one I had growing up, and I still stand by there is great music on here in early 2000 for a movie sequel that was not nearly as good as the soundtrack. Scream 3, starring world heavyweight champion David Arquette, may not have been a horror classic, but the custom soundtrack from Wind Up Entertainment was great. And who was behind making this album? Yep, Creed, featured twice on the album and also making the music video for What If around Scream 3 and making the song Is This the End for the Movie, also produced the soundtrack. That's right, Scott Stapp did something really good. And this soundtrack does not get enough credit either for how much good songs are on here, and also the soundtrack had unreleased tracks from upcoming names, featuring music from Creed, Slipknot, System of a Down, Seven Dust, Static X, Incubus, Power Man 5000, and many more through 18 tracks, there was a lot of great material. Good deep cuts and hidden gem bands on this one, like American Pearl, too. This one was one of my favorite soundtracks growing up. Some of you probably are expecting snark when you hear David Arquette and Creed in the same setup, but nope, it worked out great. And that was a look at 10 great soundtracks for bad movies. Know of another awful movie with a killer soundtrack? Leave a comment and let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Chris Doman and Dom Noble. You can have a say in upcoming videos, get weekly new music playlists, and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon. Click the link in the video description to support the channel. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Do I think movies could come back and have killer soundtracks? Possibly. In the meantime, we just need to rely on Trent Reznor to keep scoring films.